I'm Marcy Bryant. I work for the Family Justice Center of Erie County in Buffalo, New York. We are a service provider for victims of domestic violence and relationship abuse. And when we started hearing about this coronavirus situation, we knew that there was probably some changes that we needed to make to the way that we provide services to our clients. Up to this point, we've done everything in person for our entire existence. So the thought of moving into a digital and virtual realm was a little bit new and scary for us. And also knowing that we had to do it pretty quickly. I went to my local Verizon store where I worked with the business account manager and they were just super helpful and friendly in walking me through a lot of my different options and getting us set up with a couple new phones so that our domestic violence advocates could work remotely during this time. Being accessible to our clients is very important. We got set up with a couple new cell phones that our advocates were able to take home with them. That not only helps them reach out to clients that we've worked with in the past, but also be reachable by new clients who might present during this time while we're working remotely. It also allows for our staff to keep a level of safety in that they're not using their own personal cell phone numbers. And then just knowing that we had a personal contact that we could reach out to if we did have a problem. You know, sometimes you just wanna to talk to a person and it was nice to know that I have his contact information and I can reach out to him whenever we need and he'll be there to help us so that was very reassuring afternoon good evening and good morning to folks around the world as you are tuning in here we are again for another up to speed live uh, coming to you from the uh, Morristown basement here as we're renaming it uh, you can't see her but I've got my dog Pearl nearby we can't forget our furry friends and how they're helping us through all of these uh, these times right now. And a reminder for those folks who are watching every day, the best viewing experience for you, because I've gotten this question a lot, uh, is go to your mobile device, pick it up and go to VZ up to speed on Twitter. You don't have to uh, get a Twitter account or anything, and you can tune in and get a great uh, viewing experience right there from wherever you are. Seeing a lot of people using this as their lunch hour to stay connected with what we're doing. Um, but it is so important. And what a great video to start us out this morning or this afternoon, uh, reminding us the work that we're doing in these stores that are open for critical needs, emergency needs, like you heard there. And a special shout out to the folks in the Amherst, New York store, as they were able to help uh, that nonprofit last week when they came in so they could keep people connected when they need it most. So important. We're talking more about retail today. Uh, we've got Krista Bourne joining us from uh, uh, the retail uh, side of the house. She'll be giving us updates. Uh, but first, as we always do, let's start with Hans for the updates. Hans, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Good morning. Good night, wherever you are, V-teamers. Great to, to speak to you again. It uh, feels like it was recently we spoke, but uh, let me talk a little bit what has happened in the last 24 hours, because this situation is evolving all the time, and uh, we have to take decision as a corporation all the time, uh, which uh, always happen in these type of crises. First of all, we continue to see that uh, we employees are uh, safe and healthy, that's the most important. And uh, I think that uh, Christy will talk more about it, how we work with that and how many people are uh, connecting to us and, and asking questions. And that's so important. And uh, it's usually over 30, almost 40,000 people on this live webcast every day, which is just amazing. Uh, and you're sending a lot of questions. And uh, that's so important to us because it, it gears us where we see uh, challenges in the system and uh, also clarifies, of course, a lot of questions that you might have. But uh, continue to, to ask questions, continue to attend the live webcast. As said, we, we have an enormous uh, uh, audience on this one, so we'll continue with that. Uh, secondly, the network, of course, uh, cannot talk uh, enough about uh, the network. Yesterday, I released all those uh, data points from Kyle's organization about how the network is performing, the different patterns, and of course, very much picked up on all news outlets because uh, people want to understand what are the impacts on this uh, coronavirus. Of course, um, it's impact on our society when it comes to health, etc. but it's also impact on how we work and how we deal with it. I get a lot of questions about what do you think will happen when this is over? Will people change the way of living and behaving? Uh, uh, my answer yesterday was very much around I think it, if it's going to go on for a long time, I think we're going to see different behaviors, how people are thinking about using technology uh, as a more sustainable way uh, uh, to dealing with their businesses or the families. Uh, but let's see. I, I think that that can happen. Uh, on the customer side, um, 
the most recent 24 hours, a lot of outreach to large corporations, uh, helping them by moving capacity uh, between uh, the home and the offices. Uh, the team, the technology team and the VBG team are doing an outstanding job. I get a lot of feedback from large corporations thanking us for how quickly we are solving their problems. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, on the on the consumer side, it's the same same thing. A lot of outreach and, and things we're doing. And yesterday, we of course talked about uh, how important our frontline people in the field are uh, doing a lot of important work. Uh, on the society side, maybe I haven't talked so much about it. Yesterday, we came out with a lot of new stuff. Uh, we are waiving the, the late fees and overage to all customers that have problems in these financial times. Uh, we also added 15 gigabit on the wireless network for all consumers uh, and small businesses that doesn't, they're on, not on the unlimited. Uh, and we do that automatically for everyone. Uh, huge feedback, positive feedback on that one. Uh, we also have our Lifeline customers where we both come with new type of offerings as well as we, uh, uh, we, we reduce the, the prices on it so uh, more people can have it. And uh, I also talked about us connecting a lot of schools and especially on the school district in California yesterday. Uh, today, we in the morning, we also uh, launched a new thing for our society, which is Pay It Forward. Pay It Forward is a live... Uh, entertainment that do a series which we will have every week where we have live entertainment and uh, we, we were working with the organization called local initiative support corporation uh, that is gonna see that uh, a lot of this uh, money that we can raise is going to small businesses. So this is to support small businesses. The first uh, live streaming is on uh, Thursday 8 uh, p.m. Eastern time, and it's uh, Dave Matthews uh, that's going to perform for 30 minutes. It could be music, it could be gamers, it could be other type of entertainment, but it's a way for us to actually use our platforms, Yahoo platform and all our uh, consumer platform to get out to uh, uh, our audience and uh, raising money for small businesses. So we do a lot of these type of things, and I will try to highlight so you know it, but I think all of you should tune in uh, on, on Thursday, 8 p.m. then uh, to listen to Dave Matthews. And as I said, this is going to be a weekly series uh, which starts this week and it's called Pay It Forward, which is about supporting small businesses in these tough times. Uh, that's a little bit update from the last 24 hours. Jeremy, back to you. Thank you so much, Hans. And uh, Dave Matthews is always a great concert, so that'll be a nice uh, nice change for tomorrow night when I've uh, expanded all my Netflix, Netflix binging that I can't just do it anymore. So tomorrow night, 8 p.m., thank you for that. Uh, I want to bring in Krista Bourne now. Krista, like I said earlier, leads uh, our retail channel uh, and, and has a lot of employees uh, asking questions about what's happening there. So Krista, I want to go to you quickly uh, for an update on the, the status there and uh, what you want your employees to know today. Thank you, Jeremy, and I am very happy to be on uh, today's Up to Speed, and I really want to start with thanking everyone in the field and all of our customer-facing groups. Th these are tough times, and I know that uh, we're dealing with situations that are sometimes uncomfortable and unfamiliar, but we are doing it as a team, and we're doing it together. I want to make sure that we all understand that from a telesales standpoint, let me start there. 95% of our telesales professionals are now working from home. And what is very, very impressive about that is one week ago, this wasn't even an option. So within one week, a very short window, we saw customer service, GTS, finance, learning and development, supply chain, everybody come together to make sure that we equip our professionals so that they can work from home and continue to service our customers during this, this incredible time. The other areas to focus on would be indirect and residential. They also are in a work from home status and they are doing things differently. They're doing virtual visits, they're staying connected, they're doing their training. We're making sure that we're still available to answer questions from our customers and our partners. And that is a, a lot of good work that needs to happen right now because the way we communicate, the way we share information, the way we keep everybody connected, it absolutely makes a difference in the choices we make each day. So our indirect and residential teams are still very much working uh, at home and helping us do just that. Then it brings us to our retail team. 
70% of our corporate doors are closed and we are keeping the 30% open with an essential staffing model that is being led by our field leaders. So we have over 1,500 retail leaders that are working in our stores today and this week to make sure that we're there for those critical things. We are trying to get the word out that the critical services we want to provide in our stores includes critical equipment replacement, critical accessories, critical troubleshooting, and team. I want you to know that we hear your feedback. I know that not every customer experience feels critical, but we're there for the group. We're there for all of our community and every one person needs our assistance. And we're trying to make sure we do the right thing, giving them options to go online, making sure you're available for those critical services and making sure we think differently about how we extend our reach to customers through other mechanisms that our marketing team is working very hard to help us with. There's so much more for us to do, but I'm very proud of the way that our leaders are showing up. I want to shout out uh, Mike Subcheck in Arizona. He had a great comment on uh, Instagram. He said, this is the time where we're not only showing our communities, but the world what it means to be a V-teamer. And together we do great things. And I think that's the sentiment that we all share. And so thank you for leading us through this time. The last thing I want to make sure everybody knows is we're working hard on a redeployment program. You've heard Christy and the teams talk about this. We know we have incredible talent. Our skill set, our, ass, our assets in the field are incredibly valuable to the communities. And so we're working on options. What are some of the things that we can do to connect you to the opportunities we have so you can each contribute from a work from home status? So please stay tuned and make sure that your About You information is updated because that's how we will reach out to you and make sure that you know what you can do to help contribute to moving our business forward and living and serving our purpose every day. On behalf of myself and our leadership team, I want to again say thank you for being on the front lines and doing what you do every single day. Back to you, Jeremy. Oh, Krista, thank you so much for that. And I, I feel fired up and hopefully the folks who are out there watching this understands the, the critical needs and the critical places where we're serving. And thanks to, to all of our folks who continue to work. So uh, over to Christy now, our HR leader for uh, an update on uh, what's new in her world. Christy, how are you doing this afternoon? Thanks, Jeremy. And great to be here today with uh, Krista and Hans and you and talking to all the V-teamers out there. First, I want to say a really um, important message from Hans and all the members of the leadership team, myself included. Um, our support goes out personally to any of our V-teamers that have uh, COVID-19. And I want all of you to know that we've got a whole uh, nursing support and case management system that we've activated. And so we're actively reaching out to those V-teamers to talk with them, answer questions that they have from medical professionals, and also help them make sure they're getting the support that they need and access to the medical system. So on behalf of the leadership team from our daily call this morning, they all I felt it was really important to make sure you all heard that from not just myself and Hans and Krista, but from the rest of our leadership team. Um, and so again, please contact us if you're concerned at all, and we've, we've got teams here ready to help you. Um, second, I do wanna say thanks to those of you that took the time to write me questions in the Ask Christy box. We had over 600 over the last two days. And uh, I've been responding to some and I've got a team of people helping me. And what's very clear is that um, you've got a lot of questions and sometimes you've got the answer, but you're just anxious or nervous about something. And in some cases, you're apologizing to me for writing me a question. And I just want you to know that's why we're here. That's why we have the COVID webpage. That's why we've got uh, all the access to the leaders that we have here, because we know this is a time of um, instability for folks. And we're doing the daily webcast and we have the webpage so that you can seek answers and hopefully uh, help us know what's on your mind because we adjust every day based on what you're telling us. And then finally, I think I just want to reflect back a week ago, you know, Hans and I were here talking about the fact that we wanted to get to a work at home model where we could and begin to restrict our services to the public as you heard from Krista and Kevin's service yesterday. And to think here we are, we have over 110,000 V-teamers working from home. And that's up from what was 4,000 before we started uh, this process a week ago. So this is just an amazing change and shows the power of what we can accomplish at Verizon when we work together. And we've been, in addition to the work you heard Krista highlighting, we've actually run uh, over 25,000 employees were trained so far just this week on how to do a new role or take a job that they were doing on-prem and doing it from their home. 
We've implemented home garaging. Our technicians are learning new ways of working. And so we will just continue to push the envelope of how we keep Verizon moving forward together while we work through this crisis and continue to support the public. So we look forward to uh, the questions in the dialogue with you today. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you, Christy. And you can always drop those emails to us at live at verizon.com. Before we get into the questions, though, I, I want to bring up, uh, it's funny, Krista mentioned uh, the, the team out there getting some great kudos. I've got another video to share with you today from uh, a retail manager uh, out in Tucson, Arizona, Nicole Rindon, wanted to make sure I got her name there. She's sharing for customers who do come in for those critical and essential things, this is how they're taking care of them. We are very busy. Um, we have a pleasure of being such a big store and we are just excited to be here for our customers right now. Every issue that a customer comes in for is critical to them on some level because this is the way that they communicate. Every um, issue we're taking, you know, and making it the most serious, important thing that we do. Or if we need to find, um, you know, some sort of solution for a customer that's outside the box for this current situation, that we're making sure that we're going above and beyond for that. It's definitely a difficult time that they're going through right now. So we're making sure that we're listening to their concerns um, and making sure that if there's a concern that we can address immediately, that we're bubbling that up to our uh, HR business partners. We're also making sure that after a customer leaves, we're wiping down the entire workstation. We're not allowing them to touch the doors. We're um, helping them, empowering them to use their devices. And instead of us taking the phone, using the phone, we're showing them how to do it, walking them through that process. And then we're also ensuring that the team, after every customer, no matter how wait, long our wait is, they're going and washing their hands after each customer. We have so many stores that are so separated and we are a band of brothers. We're together no matter what, we're all gonna get through this together. And I'm just proud to work with this great uh, group of people hear those types of stories and I'm so proud to be able to bring those to everyone. Krista, uh, folks couldn't see you during that, but you were, you know, uh, I, I don't know the best way to describe it. You're excited and you are so uh, happy to see what our folks are doing out there. Tell me what the sense is in the stores. A lot of people want to know, how do we decide what stores are open or closed and, and the feeling you're getting from your folks? Yeah, thank you, Jeremy. And and I was I was cheering you on because I think, again, that is exactly why we're there. We're there as leaders to make sure we keep people connected, including our employees connected to the facts. So when you think about what we're doing in terms of reopening and closing stores, we are working on a week by week plan. And then we look at that plan basically hour by hour throughout the day so we can make adjustments each day as we go. We know that there are a lot of states and a lot of local counties issuing orders and we want to make sure we comply and we keep our employees safe at the same time. So it's a day by day, hour by hour experience. Uh, my team and I, we meet every day at the end of the day to make sure we lock arms on what the plan will be for tomorrow. Uh, and we'll continue to do that as long as we need to so that we're thoughtful and we're respectful with our actions. Oh, that's good to hear. Now, follow up there for the stores that are closed. Uh, folks want to know when will you be able to decide when do you return to the stores and what does that process look like uh, for, for our employees? Yeah, so I think more than anything, we're going to take it week by week. So we have a plan that gets us through this coming Saturday, and then we'll create the plan for next week. But I think what's really going to be uh, different is when we do the redeployment program that Christy and I have talked about. That will give customers, I'm sorry, that will give our employees uh, the options that are out there for them to consider so we understand their preference and we can match them to other opportunities we have within the workplace. I don't know that we have a hard date on when all of our stores will come back online, but we'll look at it every week and we'll open up stores as we can. The plan is flexible enough that it can uh, adjust with the days as they go by. And that's one of the biggest things I've heard through this whole process. It's so flexible because you may get a separate order in a, a state or something else that we have to, to work with. So thank you for that. Uh, Christy, a question for you. Uh, a lot of folks still asking about the, uh, the working from home as, as uh, many governors now are issuing and continuing their stay at home orders. What's the latest on that? Thanks for that question. We know it's on a lot of V-teamers minds. How long is this expected? Um, what will you give us direction on how long we can expect to be working from home and what we would uh, like you all to know is that for the VLC uh, Hans and others we've talked about this we really just do not have a line of sight into how the situation will evolve and so what we'd like to say and what we shared earlier in the week was really kind of an until further notice 
And this is really our new operating normal. And then as various countries or jurisdictions um, have had the uh, COVID virus potentially uh, on the downside of the slope and are reopening their markets and they're um, taking away shelter at home requirements, then we'll be able to move along with that. And so uh, we want our folks to know we'll give everybody advance notice. And our main focus right now is to try to keep everything operational and keep everybody safe. And so uh, I believe, you know, I think I'll, I'll pass this over to Hans as well to give perspective from his seat. Um, and so for employees to know, we want you to get up, get efficient, find ways to be productive. And we're working with you closely to make that possible. And then Hans can talk about how we're thinking about it from a company perspective. Uh uh, I think you covered it really good, but I also want to shout out because we're so different in phases here. I mean, some markets where we are operating, like in, in Southeast Asia, for example, we have been working from home for a quite a long time. In some places here in the US, we're basically just one a couple of days into it. So it's very different also when we, so I think what uh, Christy is saying, it, it was for us, what's going to be important, we, it's going to be gradual and it's going to be different jurisdiction, different countries. So it's really hard to answer, hey, when will we go back? So uh, I think that uh, that's important when we speak to our all 135,000 people out there right now, all our employees, not all of you are on the call. Uh, it's different circumstances, uh, but we are actually coordinating that together uh, or Christy and her team is coordinating that with every market, etc. And of course, uh, Krista talking about the stores here in the US, but we have very different uh, uh, circumstances in, in many places. And, and, and we are very much aware of that. And some, some of you have actually been working from home for quite a while right now. That's a, a great reminder, Hans. What's your day like today? I know when we checked in last week to talk about that, you're talking to, to leaders around the world. What's uh, what's it like now for you? Still the same conversations, or is there are you seeing a change? Yeah, so I I try to do what I, uh, I tell everybody else to do. Uh, for first of all, eight o'clock every morning, I, I start uh, one hour uh, with uh, my executive team uh, and Christy. Uh, we are going over what's happening uh, and uh, what uh, things that coming up during the day, what actions and decisions we need to take. That we do between eight and nine every morning. The rest of the day, basically, I go back to normal. And I try to do, uh, I'm not sure this is normal that uh, on the webcast every day, 30 minutes, but everything else is fairly normal. Uh, so I've done uh, today two uh, of our big uh, suppliers. We have had a uh, conversation with their CEOs and talking what they are doing, how we're supplying 5G equipment, uh, how are we rolling out fiber. So uh, me together with Kyle and Craig, uh, which is heading up the supply chain, we have talked to them. In the afternoon, I have two CEOs of the two largest banks in the world that I'm going to talk to. Uh, and um, then uh, uh, I have some internal meetings after that. So I try to have a normal day as possible, but of course, attending this at the same time. And, and that's what's also what I, I'm trying to preach for everyone, that we need to get uh, productive in this uh, environment. We don't know how long it will take and how long we will be in this. We just need to have business normal. It's good for our minds. Uh, it's good for... Uh, it's good for a company that we're doing that. So that's what I'm asking. Good, thank you. And I think a good reminder, I got a couple of emails yesterday, you know, as a lot of us are now working from home, don't forget the folks we share houses with, our roommates, our, our loved ones, our partners. So thank you to my wife, Alex, as we're now working in two separate floors here. So uh, she can stay sane and I can keep doing my work, but so important to recognize those folks yeah. who, who, who are doing that for us as well. So uh, I also wanna share this, uh, Chris, if we can go and pop up the, the next graphic, some thank yous uh, that we've gotten from some of our customers, because I think it's important we stay grounded in, in the work we do, like Chris just said earlier. But this is an email we got from a customer thanking us for going the extra mile to keep us all connected, less stressed and happier in these groundbreaking moments. Thank you for stepping up to the plate at this time for your customers. Uh, bless your employees and all the companies that are helping uh, going the extra mile and being one of the helpers, as Fred Rogers used to say. I think that's so important. And then a, a tweet this morning. It looks like some of our, our teams are out there helping other companies uh, get set up. This is in Tennessee. You can see where we helped a, a nursing health line uh, set up a call center where they can be there. Social distancing, but still helping people. And then finally, this, uh, this last tweet that uh, we got in from the Verizon handle. Uh, from a, a truck driver uh, saying, thank you so much for uh, for uh, keeping me connected. Uh, needs his phone because his wife is having some hours and, and money is tight. So all good reminders there as to what we do. Uh, and I just want to remind people and share that with people today. So I want to go to Hans uh, for final thoughts and uh, we'll go from there. 
Uh, thank you, Jeremy, and thank you very much for everyone to attend this uh, live webcast today. Uh, again, I, I, I want to reinforce it's so important about communication these days and uh, the flow of questions coming to Christy or the attendance on this is just telling us that this is a very important thing in these times. Uh, then I, I, I just want to say, like uh, Krista said, thanks everyone out in the front line uh, supporting our customers. It's so important. Uh, with the balance, of course, safe and healthy, as we heard from the stores uh, about how to dealing with that. The same goes for uh, our frontline employees working in the field, uh, solving technology problems. Uh, so I, I, I can I can just reinforce the big thank you from all of us and the leadership uh, around this. And again, I just want to tell you: remember, communicate, communicate with partners, with friends, with families, and with colleagues in these times. And and try to get back to the normal cadence for the ones working from home, have their normal meetings. I think all of that uh, is very important because uh, um, mentally it's good that you actually have something to do, but also it's uh, really important for the company that we continue to work through this crisis as we don't really know how long it's going to be. So um, I think that's the message from today. So Jeremy, back to you. Thank you, Hans. And uh, Christy and Krista as well will continue these updates every day at noon. And, uh, Quick uh, plug, Hans will be on the Verizon News Instagram uh, 3.30 this afternoon talking about leadership uh, during COVID-19, so uh, catch him there. Uh, and as we're wrapping up today, I also want to, uh, as he mentioned earlier, our Pay It Forward series. One way that we're working to put smiles on people's faces and helping some of the small business owners. Music right now is important for a lot of people. I know when I'm not here, I've got music playing just to, to keep me grounded there, but uh, I want to bring some some sort of light to communities when they need it most. So starting tomorrow night, uh, we will introduce Pay It Forward, a live Twitter series with Dave Matthews. So enjoy this video. Have a great day, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.